this real nice example of a, of a Keck Garmin steam engine. I'm not really familiar with these guys at all. They had steam on the farm before I come along, but it was long gone by the time uh, I got there in the early 50s. Of course, we're all familiar with all of these things here. Even got a few of them in my own yard. One of the things though that you may not be uh, familiar with is this guy right here. This is actually a rock crusher. Um, on our property, we actually had a cement, an operating cement mill uh, years ago, but of course before my time. And at that cement mill, we had a, a rock crusher that it was steam driven, much larger than this here. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. This is Tractor Man 44 here. We had to run down a little town to have an injection pump taken care of at a diesel injection services company. Well, on the way back, I decided to treat my wife to a, a nice Valentine's Day lunch at a little place called Mary Jane's Restaurant, in a little town called Perryville, Missouri. And we stumbled across this, this uh, American Tractor Museum, which is really unique. I never even knew it existed. Of course, we haven't been down here in a, you know several years, uh, but it's like I said, several miles south of us, you know. And uh, so we're going to walk in and take a look. See, I already showed you some of the stuff that's sitting on the outside. So we got to go inside and see what we can find. Okay, guys. Now that we're on the inside. I can uh, probably tell you this is going to be a long video because just in this one room I've already seen two dozen things I've never seen before and am totally unfamiliar with. And I tell you what, some of the work on this stuff is just absolutely incredibly uh, incredible as far as fit and finish is concerned. Now the old Twin City, I am familiar with that back there. Greyhound. No idea, have no idea about it whatsoever. A cross motor, wow. Gray tractor company, no idea. There's another cross motor, Minneapolis Moline. Wow. Or I guess Minneapolis, pardon me that. The old case. That's all predates my time. Now I've heard of Themen. Samson is a familiar, familiar brand, as is the Avery back there, and Hyder. Not quite this old. I'm more familiar with the newer, the newer Hyders. And of course, everybody knows Waterloo Boy, the forerunner to uh, to John Deere. I tell you though, the work on these tractors is just absolutely impeccable. And here's a Rumley Do All, very popular, very well known. Again, it's still a generation older than what I'm uh, what I'm familiar with. In the distance, there an Illinois Superdrive. That's funny. And then the kids we got, you know, we got Minneapolis Bull. And for the Massey Harris fans out there, uh, my buddy. Dave up at RCAF Polar Express. He should really enjoy this old uh, this old Massey Harris. Here's another Huber. Good Lord, another cross motor Huber. Again, I tell you, this this series of tractors definitely predates my uh, my experiences. I've had the good fortune of seeing a good number of these at the antique tractor shows and stuff that I go to, but not these in particular. And of course, Hart Parr predates the Oliver Corporation. There's the front side of that Avery. Really cool. And the Illinois Superdrive. Look at this guy here, Indiana. Yeah, 
And we have a much larger cider press, just almost exactly like this, that's sitting in our front yard for decoration in various stages of decay, though I may say. Not quite as nice as this one. Here's an Avery water wagon, complete with a hand pump for pumping water into the 550 gallon tank to uh, transport out into the field to uh, replenish the supply of water in your steam engine. There's a big old Avery here. I have no idea what the horsepower is on that, but it's pretty good size. Another cross motor case. We had a cross motor case. I don't know what size it was on the farm uh, before I came around. I remember they took it to the, uh, hearing the story about them taking it to the junkyard in, uh, in our local town. And here's a Plymouth, a little Plymouth tractor. Really unique. How's this for a prime example of a Ford 600? Love to take that out and plow snow with it. And all work. Never heard of it. Cream separator. That's a McCormick Deering. I can tell by the color of it. And here's a Gibson. I could have picked up a Gibson. Pretty much the same size without a uh, steering pedestal on it for almost nothing uh, about 20 years ago, and I just did not do it. If you look up above, you can see a good selection of old and newer pedal tractors for the kids. I guarantee that's an International Harvester freezer up there, chest-type freezer, guarantee it is. That'll be an old R22 chest-type freezer. R22 was used before they started using R12 on some of those. What's that? Ah, look at here. International Harvester Freezer. Man, Massey Harris Pacemaker. Awesome. My much older brother has the Massey Harris um, Challenger, which is the next size bigger than the Pacemaker. But I've got a buddy that has a, at least one, maybe even a couple of these here. And of course, everybody and his brother's got a pony. I've even got one stuck in the shed. And you talk about one piece of uh, equipment here that's absolutely incredible. Is this all original? Thresh machine. According to the plaque that's written, that they think, because the serial number, this is the very first one that was ever produced, and is definitely the only one that they know of that's still surviving to this day. Of course, a lot of the wood is all original, but you can see some stuff that's been restored. You can't hardly get something this old without a little bit of rot or something happening somewhere along the line. But this is absolutely incredible from the from Cape Girardeau, as a matter of fact. It's a Ford, uh, Ford Model T or a Model TT truck. If you notice, everything's pretty much wood. Um, I don't know what year it is, but if you look, you can see wooden spokes on the wheels. Uh, more than likely, it's... The whole cab is made out of wood. Um, this might be a little more modern than the, look at the row of coils right there, little buzz coils, one for each cylinder and the engine. We had a 1921 white out on the property that our grandfather bought brand new and it was totally wooden. It actually had wooden fellows on the steering wheel, had steel spokes, but wooden fellows and a wooden steering wheel. And of course the cab was entirely wood as well as the, uh, the spokes on the solid rubber tires, very similar to this. 1925. The missus said it's a 1925, so it's four years newer than the uh, than the old white we had. For the kids, another row of a combination of new and old pedal tractors. And you don't find a prettier example of a Minneapolis Moline than this guy right here. This thing is absolutely impeccable. <laughs> the missus said she'd, she'd let me have that in my garage, in her garage. I guess she'd... Or outside. She said she'd park her Mustang outside let me put that in. Twin City. Of course, that's Minneapolis Moline. I have no idea what this is, but it's called the Speed X. 1941. 1941 Speed X. Pond. Built by Pond Garden Tractor Company. Huh. 
built by Pond Garden Tractor Company. Interesting. Look at this six cylinder, six cylinder flathead in this Eagle Six. Now I have no idea what that is either. 1936. No, wait a minute. This one's 1938. This is a 1938 Eagle Six. Who's manufacturer of it? Eagle Manufacturing. Says Eagle Manufacturing. Appleton, Wisconsin. In Appleton, Wisconsin, and that's something. And look at the cross hash, the cross hatch checks on the belt pulley. I guess that's for grip. Here's your Oliver Hart Par row crop. I could have bought one of these, almost this identical tractor, total and complete for $200 one day at a salvage yard. And I didn't have enough money in my pocket and I knew I'd probably be skinned alive if I spent it. No, and I did not buy not it. Oliver. The missus likes Oliver, so she's yelling at me right now. <laughs> I'd give it a hug if I could touch it. <laughs> They preserved the patina on this old Twin City. Kind of have him staged here in uh, maybe his natural habitat, so to speak. Probably not really. <laughs> these are real popular at the, uh, at the shows, are these little Gibsons right here. You see those guys a lot. Sometimes they'll put a Vanguard V-Twin or other, um, other Kohler engines or um, Briggs and Stratton V-Twins on them. It's a great complement of repair parts. And yet another whole row up above of more pedal cars down here on the far end and pedal tractors. Absolutely amazing. Pretty little Fordson. Now, if the missus was to come over here and take a look at this Silver King, she would probably um, Probably throw a fit right there. She's been looking for a Silver King to buy for me for years and years. And here's one right here, just not for sale. Oh, it's gorgeous. Would you buy that for me? Yeah. Ooh, I got a commitment. She said she'd buy it for me. <laughs> and take a look. Here's a little um, international throttle governed engine. I think I've got two of those sitting in the shed. Of course, the missus don't know about that. Graham Bradley, one of the smoothest running uh, six cylinder engines. Uh, kind of like the Massey Harris uh, 101 Supers and the 101 um, uh, Seniors. Very similar engine, if not the same engine. I, I don't really know. This... Well, the missus called my attention to the little grasshopper tractor here. I was going to ask you if that was a grasshopper. That's the little grasshopper. Alice Chalmers G. That's got an N62 Continental engine in it, the same engine as the Massey Harris Pony, with a few basic uh, casting changes or des design differences because this is a rear engine mount on this guy here. And look at this old case. Good Lord, is that not beautiful with that cast iron grill? As well as this co-op. Now, I got a story about a co-op. I sat on my rear a little bit too long. A buddy of mine gave me one that had been abandoned on property that he had bought and had been there for five or six years and I never got around to going over and getting it. And one day I hooked on to the tractor and a winch and went on over there to pull it up out of the woods went down behind my buddy's house and unbeknownst to him it had been salvaged stolen retrieved recovered maybe even hopefully restored by somebody else i missed my opportunity to pick up a co-op that's entirely my fault I don't know what this little guy is here. Sure is cute though. Oh, row of tiptoe spades down there, you know. Joe shoe last. Breast drill. I've got a number of these in the shop. I even have one of those sitting on the front porch. Wide complement of hand tools. Here's your hay fork. That would run the length of the trolley in the middle of the hay barn, drop down off the end out of that peak into your, um, and stab that fork into your loose hay. And you'd pull it up and then transfer it through the tracking system all the way back into the barn and drop it. Okay, now for all you guys out there who do a lot of logging, 
just think of what you could do with this uh, with this winch right here. Man, oh man, now that's a setup. Solid rubber wheels on the back of this guy. And what a winch, good Lord. I do not recognize the tractor. We're gonna find out what it is here in a second. I thought it was a Fordson, but I couldn't tell from back there. I was afraid to say it, but it is a Fordson. Don't have to worry about getting flat tires with those guys. Solid rubber. Centaur. Familiar with the name. That is really cool. Now only a few select viewers is gonna recognize this guy right here. This is a, this is a Kaiser. Uh, I actually had to look at the tag myself. I did not know what it was. It's not the style of Kaiser that I'm familiar with, with this uh, lay down tailgate similar to a pickup truck. I guess you could haul your bale of straw and your calf right along with you to town or whatever, you know? That's really pretty cool. Look at the bend. Uh, the missus is pointing out the odd shaped tailgate. Man, that is really amazing. I'm totally unfamiliar with this guy here. If there's any of you guys out there that are recognize this or, or have your own personal experiences, let me know. When she asked me to take a look at it, I said, oh, hey, what is that, a Hudson? You know, from the back end, I thought, well, then maybe that was a Hudson, but it sure is not. That is way cool. Considering the excellence in the restoration on every one of these machines, I just absolutely know that they have got to have done the research and come up with the proper paint codes uh, because these things are just absolutely gorgeous. An old mogul. International. The tag says 1917 to 1922, so this is roughly a hundred year old. International Junior. Really cool. This is a little bit newer when they got into the Titan series. Larger horsepower. Much heavier weight. My nephew has a McCormick Daring very similar to this. He used to run a sawmill for his father-in-law. It's sitting in his yard right now. Much smaller McCormick Daring. Now we're getting into the newer. The new, well, I guess we were. Farmall AV. My buddy over in South Africa. Like this. This is really nice. Into the F Series Farmall. They had regulars and stuff before they came out with the Farmall um, F-Series, I believe. Rock Island, wow. Haven't seen a Rock Island in a long, long time. Little John Deere. And another very similar Hart Bar. This is about the time that uh, Oliver and Hart Bar were, uh, were combining. I've actually got a set of cultivators, this exact set of cultivators and the cultivator mounts uh, sitting down in the woods off of a newer Model 70. Another bigger Hubert, wow. Now this is one I've never seen, the Go Tractor, <laughs> General Ordnance Company. This here is really cool. This is a very first full wheel drive Massey Harris. This is a GP, general purpose um, full wheel drive. These guys were kind of weird because they were front heavy and you had to be careful on, uh, on the incline or you would uh, do a little bit of a nose dive. And of course, everybody knows the venerable Oliver 77. I've got a couple of these myself. I got 
two 77s and a couple of 70s, and even a 66 Archer. Really smooth running six cylinders. Wow, such a nice case, 730. And my gosh, I just looked up and saw another whole row, two shelf worth of more pedal tractors. Now again, guys, this is in a little town called Perryville, Missouri. So if you ever happen to be coming up Interstate 55, you know, out of Cape Girardeau, heading towards the big city of St. Louis, uh, swing by Perryville. Um, and just ask anybody, I'm sure anybody around will be able to direct you to it, but it's right on the main drag, right in, in downtown. And while you're here, if you want a good sandwich or a good lunch or even a supper, uh, go to a little restaurant called Mary Jane's, and I guarantee everybody in this particular area is gonna be able to direct you to, to that restaurant too. Uh, we just came from there for a quick Valentine's Day lunch and had a great time and stumbled onto this little jewel and thought we'd like to share it with you. So hope you all enjoyed this. Sorry it lasted out so long, but uh, it is what it is. And this track man 44, and I'm out of here, guys. And the missus. Say, good say goodbye. There's no cock shuts. She says there's no cock shuts. Thumbs down. <laughs> At least there was a Silver King, though.